welcome to a new video of the Napon Network Automation Series. I'm Michael Alvarez and I will continue to show you how you can implement network programmability and automation with Python and Napon. We will use two important tools used in network automations, which are Jinja and YAML. Combining all these tools, we will write a Python script that you can use to make configurations in your network in a faster and more reliable way. So, let's get started. We are going to start by introducing the network on which we are going to work. As you can see, the network is similar to the one we saw in the videos working with Cisco IOS and IOS 6R and working with Huawei VRP. On the left, we have two routers and one Cisco switch. One of the Cisco routers uses the Cisco IOS 6R operating system and the other devices use the Cisco IOS. On the right, we have one Huawei router and a Huawei switch, both with the VRP operating system. On the left, we also have the local network 10.10.10.0 mask24, which communicates with the network on the right 10.30.30.0 mask24. In the center, the routers share their routes using the dynamic routing protocol VGP. Today, we are going immediately to work with Python. Here, we have a network closer to the reality of companies where routers and switches from different vendors are managed. We have already seen how with network programmability we can collect important data from our network. Now we are going to use it to apply configurations. In our scenario, we have eliminated the configuration of the interfaces between iOS R3 and VRP R2. Our task will be to use Napalm to configure the interfaces and set up the VGP peering. To carry out this task, we are going to use two interesting tools, Jinja and YAML. Jinja is basically an engine used to create templates in Python. With Jinja, we plan to create the configuration templates for our routers. YAML, on the other hand, is a standard for serializing data in a human-readable form. With YAML, we plan to define the parameters or values that we will use in the Jinja templates. Let's see it, because it's easier to understand. We are going to build configuration templates for Cisco and Huawei separately. We will start creating blank files, and then we will build the code. The names of both files will start with the vendor's name, for convenience for later development. Let's start with YAML. What we did here was to define the interface parameters that we are going to configure in the YAML format. In this case, as we are creating the YAML template for our Cisco router, the interface that we are going to configure is Gigabit Ethernet 01. Then we define the description, the IP address, and the network mask. Below, we define the VGP parameters such as the router's autonomous system, the neighbor's autonomous system, and the neighbor's IP address. On Huawei's side, it's basically the same. The only thing that changes is the data. In this case, we will configure the Ethernet 101 interface with its description, the IP address, and the network mask. For VGP, here we have the router's autonomous system, 
the neighbor autonomous system, and the neighbor's IP address. Let's now build the configuration templates with Jinja. Okay, now let's explain what we did with Jinja. If you look at it, we see in this file iOS configuration commands and in the WebWorld file we will also have configuration commands but for VRP operating system. Within the brace, what we will find are Python objects and sentences. These objects, if you look closely, have the names of the variables defined in the YAML file. And basically, that is how it works. With Jinja, we build a template that fills its parameters from the data found in YAML. What we see in the first line is a for loop that goes through the parameters configured in the interface object in YAML, which in this case are information of the interface, such as their name, description, IP address, and network mask. Also, from YAML, we import the variables for the VGP configuration, such as the router's autonomous system, the neighbor's IP, and the neighbor's autonomous system. In the same way, it is what we will see in Huawei's file. Here we have a for loop that also collects the information from the interfaces, such as the name, the description, the IP address, and the network mask. The same in VGP, we find the variables to define the router's autonomous system, the neighbor's IP address, and the neighbor's autonomous system. At the moment, this is all we will do with YAML and Jinja. What we will do now is that we will edit the script that we wrote in the previous video for Cisco IOS and Huawei VRP routers. First, we are going to make a copy of the script and rename it. Okay, here we have the script. Let's edit it. Let's quickly see the modifications we made to this code. First, we delete all the functions and tables except the one that collect the general information of the devices. We built a new function called getTemplateConfig. 
which receives the vendor parameter Cisco or Huawei and returns the configuration to be applied to the devices. To do this, the function loads the YAML file and loads it into the Jinja template. Since we have created the files starting with the vendor's name, the function can now easily load the corresponding configuration for each operating system. We go back up Using the load merge candidate method, we load the configuration but without applying it to the device. With compareConfig method, we compare the current configuration of the device with the one we are going to apply to see the new configurations. Finally, we ask through the command line that the user confirms whether or not they want to apply the configuration. The commit config method is used to apply the configuration and the discard config method to discard the loaded configuration. Before running the code, we are going to connect to the routers to see what configuration they have right now in the interfaces and what configurations they have in the PGP process. As we can see, the interface on Cisco router has no configuration. PGP also has no configuration related to the new peering that we want to configure. Now let's move on to the Huawei router. The interface has no configuration either. VGP also has no configuration related to the new peering that we want to configure. Now we are going to proceed to run the code. Ok, the configurations are applied. Let's see if everything is as expected using the command line. Well, here we can see that the interface was configured correctly. Now, let's look at BGP. Excellent! We also see that the configuration was completed correctly within BGP. Now we're going to go to the Cisco router. Let's see the interface configuration. We also see that the interface was configured correctly. Let's see VGP configuration. And we also see that VGP was configured correctly. Now, let's see if the VGP peering is in up state. Excellent! Here we can see that the peering went up a short time ago. Let's appreciate how with network programmability, we configure interface in a VGP peering. For a single peering, it is probably faster to do this configuration via the command line. The truth is that this example makes sense when we have to make massive configurations. In addition to being faster, the use of Jinja and YAML templates reduces the risk of human errors and maintains consistency in configurations. Another point is that we could have done this verification using programmability making use of the code that we created in previous videos to print the VGP peering table from our network. But I will let this verification for homework to you. Engineers, we have reached the end of our video configuring a Cisco and Huawei multi-vendor network. If you like it, give it a like. If you have questions, doubts, write them in the comment sections. Thanks for supporting the channel. In the next and final video of this series, we are going to take automation to the next level, making processes like the ones we have built to run on their own and send notifications without the intervention of a user. It will be an interesting video, so subscribe if you have not subscribed 
and activate the notifications so you can continue learning network programmability and automation.